All right, Bolo Buddies, we are at the Goodwill Bins. It is time to dig with me. So as always, I ask everybody to put things they see down in the comments with a timestamp. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Okay, so a timestamp is basically telling me and everybody else in the video where you saw the item. So if it's at two minutes and 30 seconds, you put that down below and you just say, I normally pick up records and I sell this type of record for good money. That's my bread and butter. Or, oh my goodness, you missed a big money bolo. I would have picked up whatever item it was. So this keeps it educational for everyone. It's a super wet, fun way to learn. And I will also be popping up screenshots of how I listed everything that I actually bought at this trip to the bins. And those items are currently on eBay and some of them are on whatnot. So we will talk more about that as the video goes on. But this little guy, he's from, is he Star Wars? I thought about picking him up, but I ended up leaving him behind. I always, always, always look in jewelry containers because you know what? I have actually found jewelry at the bins. I think in my sticker video, there was a silver, a sterling silver piece that I found. It was like new in the box. Incredible what you can find. Incredible what people donate. Incredible what ends up in this massive pile of I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> I call it inventory, but there is some trash. There's a lot of stuff that is empty boxes and stuff that really should just be thrown out that we have to dig through. If you go to the bins, tell me what your favorite thing to source is. You're going to see that I mostly shop in the hard goods area. I stay away from the clothing. Not a big fan of searching for clothing. That's not really my thing. So if you're new to the channel, you're basically going to see hard goods in this video. But don't go away if you sell clothing because you may learn that, hey, I can sell different things. I don't know if you know, but on Mercari and Poshmark, those are not only clothing websites. You can also sell hard goods. I think a big misconception for Poshmark is that it's mainly clothing. That is absolutely not true. I sell tons of hard goods on both of those platforms. So if you're thinking about getting on different platforms, I do have some links down below, the referral links, so you'll get some cash to shop if you use my referral link. And also, um, if you want to try List Perfectly, that is a cross-posting service. That's what I use. I've been using it since 2019. I start my items on eBay and then cross-post to Poshmark and Mercari. There's a demo video down below. We won't go into all that, but you can check it out. And if you decide you like it and want to use it, you can use coupon referral code BOLOBUDDIES, all one word, to get 30% off your first month. All right, let's keep digging here. These trucks. Now, you're going to see me pick up some smalls. What do I do with my smalls? Some of them I list individually. A lot of times, small little figures, you'd be surprised. You can get 10, 15, 20 bucks out of some of them, sometimes more. It really, really just depends on the item and how hard it is to find. Uh, vintage items obviously do better. I just picked up that little, uh, oh, what do you call it? I'm trying to think of what they're called. They're VTech and they're lights and sounds. And I usually pick those up and put them in small lots. So I have not listed those yet. I'm working to put a bundle together and then I will get that listed. The little lovey, I did pick the lovey up, but I had to wash that one. So I have not got it listed yet. I'm thinking I maybe should have picked up that little taggy. Would you guys have picked that up or would you left it behind? Was that fabric? Should I have grabbed the fabric? Oh my goodness. I always watch these videos back and do voiceovers and I'm like, oh, I should have maybe grabbed that. Uh, a lot of people are like, don't have regrets. And I'm like, well, it's not really regret. It's just kind of looking and thinking, huh, did I miss that? Should I have grabbed that? But when you have as much inventory as I have, I probably need to be even more selective than I am. I have a tendency to want to save everything from the landfill. Who's with me on that? Who has a huge money pile, profit pile? I heard somebody call it a profit pile the other day. 
And I'm like, I kind of like the profit pile also. Money Mountain. So many names for our inventory that is unlisted. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys call your unlisted inventory? Um, I would love to hear it because I'm sure there's going to be some funny answers to that. Everybody has a name. There has to be a name. I can probably imagine that your significant other has a name for it as well. <laughs> All right. Did I miss a big money bolo? I picked these up. I looked at them and I thought about it. And then I was like, oh, they're heavy. I just don't know. I did a little Google or eBay comps and I just kept finding more and more and more. And I think because there were so many that I probably could have sold them for really good money. They are Doberman magazines. And it would definitely probably be a long tail item that would take the right buyer. But what if that right buyer was ready to buy and it sold really quickly? So again, I'm picking up anything Paw Patrol, any current cartoons. I always pick those up, the lightweight stuff that doesn't weigh very much. That was, I don't know if that was a mega block. I think it might've been a mega block. So I will make small lots. That vehicle right there was Tracker's vehicle. It's a little bit harder to find than your average uh, Paw Patrol, the common ones. I did find some die cast cars that are Paw Patrol, which some of those can do better. Look, more Doberman. Should I have got those? Would you guys have got those? I know my ephemera sellers that are watching are probably like, oh my goodness, why didn't you get that? This one here, I could not find a really good comp on that, so I priced it a little high, and we'll see what happens. But as far as the other Paw Patrol, I have not listed those yet. I'm going to make some small lots. I might bring some of those to Whatnot in a toy show, or I may put some on Whatnot in the Buy It Now. Haven't quite decided yet. Just making bags of similar and like items right now, and we'll figure that out down the road when I am ready to list and have enough to list to make small bundles. Let me know in the comments, do you grab the small toys? Do you create bundles? How do you list your small toys? What platforms are you using? Uh, is any Can you sell toys on Kitizen? I know the other day I featured a bolo where somebody sold wallpaper on Kitizen, and I thought Kitizen was mostly... Uh, clothing, kids clothes. So this is a Kohl's Cares Dr. Seuss fish. And I don't normally pick up Kohl's Cares, but I have heard in the Rebel Resellers videos over and over and over, pick up Kohl's Cares. It's a great bread and butter item. So I picked it up and guess what? It sold super fast. I couldn't believe how fast it sold. Now I did price it competitively. I priced it on the lower end, but it sold quick. So if you're not following the Rebel Reseller, definitely go follow her. I popped up a screenshot a little bit ago of her channel, and I will link it down below in the description. She specializes in plush. Now, the item that I just popped up was a Leap Frog item. Back when we were on lockdown, I don't know if you guys remember, um, I'm sure you do, those items were flying out of my eBay store. I could not keep them in stock. Now it's really, really hard to sell the leapfrog items. They are much more long tail. So I figure I'll be sitting on that for a while, but it was a new old stock item. It's still in the original packaging, which is always a pickup. And also I believe that was considered media because it was a book and a game cartridge. Uh, the little baby rattle that you saw, those are like little loveys, things that kids get attached to that if they lose, people are always looking for those on eBay. I think I sold that thing on Whatnot, if I remember correctly. I'm not even sure what it was. So we're going to keep digging here, see what we can find. I think I sold that on Whatnot also, or I threw it in a toy lot. Maybe it's in a toy lot. I don't know. It's somewhere. I remember picking it up, but I don't know. I don't think it was complete. These lights are pretty cool. Would you guys have picked those up or left them behind? Uh, number one, the reason I left them behind is I didn't know if they worked. Number two, it was a tangled mess, um, which, you know, tangles, ah, I do a lot of uh, jewelry untangling shows on my whatnot, and I like doing those on whatnot because I can talk to you guys while I untangle, and then I sell the items as I untangle. So if you're not following me on Whatnot, I'd love for you guys to come over. I'm doing lots and lots of jewelry 
I am Bolo Buddies, all one word over there. There is a referral link down below and you can get $15 to shop if you use that to join Whatnot. If you've never heard of Whatnot, let me know down in the comments. I'm wondering how many people have never heard of the platform. I'm betting there's a few. It is incredible. These here are educational mats. I don't know. Do you think I should have grabbed these? Do you think maybe a teacher would have bought these? Maybe would have been a good item for Poshmark. I don't know. Here's another uh, leapfrog. I left that one behind. I was being more selective. This right here I have not listed yet, but I definitely picked it up. It is a vintage sewing machine booklet. So it is basically instructions for your sewing machine, but it's for an old one. It is vintage. And I actually had that in my pile for my ephemera show that I did on whatnot, and I never got to it. So it's just sitting in my basement. I may end up putting that on eBay. I don't know. I, I'm not sure when I'm going to do another ephemera show. If you guys were at my ephemera show, did you like it? Do you want to see more ephemera shows? I have lots and lots of that kind of stuff. I've got crafters items, toys, you name it. I've got it. And you can sell anything, pretty much anything on whatnot. Of course, there's the normal restrictions. And okay, I grabbed all of these buttons. Buttons do sell. I sold these on whatnot. Now, here's a fun little story for you. Hello, Courtney. Well, I'm finally getting around to sending this your way. Only two months later, this button was purchased on whatnot at my show. She said I paid 50 at an, for an entire 10 of interesting old buttons, but this is the one I wanted. Knew it would be good. After doing research on Worth Point, thanks to you, Courtney, I still have all the buttons to list, and that one sold for $149.99 for one button. So yes, anytime I see buttons, I am picking it up. Now, that button did not come from the Goodwill bins. I don't remember where I sourced that button. It's been sitting in my money pile forever. So there was another sewing machine thing I picked up. Definitely going to pick up old ephemera. It will sell. Now, a lot of times ephemera can be long tail, but if you list it and that person is looking for it, it can also be a quick sale and a lot of it can go for big money, but a lot of it is bread and butter as well. So you always got to do your research. All right, let's see what else we can find here. Scissors, those were pretty cool. Maybe I should have picked them up. I ended up leaving them behind. You guys let me know. Would you have grabbed the scissors? And do you guys pick up buttons? Has anybody sold buttons for big money? I know that uh, Noelle, Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle sells buttons. I think she actually collects buttons also. So those patches, that was a little baggie of patches and they were Girl Scout patches and I brought those to Whatnot and those sold over there on auction. I think that was, I may have put those in my toy show that I did. They just happened to be in the toy bag, so I sold them. Not really a toy, but I guess, I don't know, somebody could put them on a vest for their kids, so kind of a toy. These right here can have good comps. Always look these up if you see them. The condition of these was not that great, so I went ahead and left them behind because they were sort of a heavy item, and if I was going to pick those up, I would want them to be in really nice condition. Maybe I should have grabbed them. I probably left some money behind, but... You know, you pick and choose and you decide in that split moment what you're going to do. All right, let's keep digging here. Uh, by the way, you can see that I am using a tote. That is my shopping cart. There was a period of time where our bins was super, super short on carts. If you weren't like the first seven or eight into the door, you did not have a cart. And I think this day, if I remember correctly... The person before me got a cart and then that was it. So I ran over and I looked for a big tote and that was my shopping cart. So it was definitely better than nothing because nothing is impossible. There was one day when I couldn't find a tote and I just asked for a bag and they gave me one of the big Goodwill bags and I shopped and just threw my items in that. But that makes things really hard. That was a Duplo Lego. It's obviously a replacement piece. What I typically do with my Duplo Legos is I put them in lots and I will sell them as a small lot. Now, this thing right here has little letters that goes into it. I think that's the thing. And I have sold the letters as replacement letters before. So always be on the lookout for those replacement letters. They do really well. They're like little blocks. 
right there, these are Bob the Builder, and I did not test them because I didn't have any of the small batteries, so I am just selling them as untested. Look at that thing. Would you guys have got that? That would have been so heavy. I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? That's probably going to cost me a lot of money. I don't know if like as far as weight, I probably could have negotiated the weight. If it's a really heavy item, they may have given me half off or something like that. Just depends on who's working. Sometimes they don't allow discounts on certain items, but I didn't know if it would work. You know, if it had a hole in it, like why was it donated? Did somebody just get sick of it or was it damaged? Because a lot of times people will send their damaged items to the Goodwill. I'm not sure why they do that, but they will. <laughs> and then, you know, you get home. Same with puzzles and games. Always missing pieces, always missing parts. You get home and you're like, okay, I'm going to list this. And then the game is missing something. So that is when you can part it out. So if you part out games, let me know down in the comments. How do you do with that? Do you enjoy doing that? I feel like... I enjoy parting things out sometimes, but for me, it's very, very time consuming. I have done really well with certain things, like I did a Ninja Turtle playset. I've done connects. And what I have found is when you part items out, some of the items sell very quickly and other items take a long, long, long time to sell. But I will say that typically, in most cases, if you part it out and sell the items individually, you will make more money than you would have if you would have kept it whole. But I know also a lot of people will keep things in the original condition if they get it and it's new and ready to go. They won't part it out because they want to keep it as a set. Let me know which person you are in the comments. Do you part it out or do you keep it whole? I will part things out if it's already missing pieces. Same thing with like doll houses and stuff like that. If they are damaged and in poor condition, I sell the windows. I sell the doors. You guys have seen me pull those off of doll houses that I find at the bins because they're already incomplete. And most people are not going to buy an incomplete house, but they will buy the windows. They will buy the door. They will buy the steps. I have taken doll houses completely apart and sold those things. That was Norwex. Norwex is an awesome brand, but it is direct sales. So I'm pretty sure that the rules of the company are that you cannot list those items on platforms. That's how most direct sales companies are. So I would recommend anything that is direct sales, make sure that you check to see if it is a Vero or an eBay policy violation like on the list because those items will get removed and you will get penalties on your account. I have a whole series of videos that talk about bureaus and policy violations that members of my Bolo Buddies Facebook group have shared. So if you got, is, want to learn about things not to list on eBay, definitely check that out. That was an old wooden top. I have not listed it yet. I'm really not sure how to list it, but I think you take a string and wrap it around it. Did you guys see that mirror? Can you believe that that mirror was intact? Oh my goodness, I sat it up high to the side because I didn't want somebody to break it. Here are a bunch of little transformer pieces. I thought about buying these and selling them as a lot of incomplete for replacements and parts, but decided to leave them behind. I just wasn't in the mood. You guys know how it is. But uh, yeah, some of those, I'm guessing probably somebody is looking for those pieces. And I definitely probably could have sold them but I wasn't sure which Transformers they were. And if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that I struggle with Transformers. Oh my goodness, they are so hard for me to figure out. Even like the three-step ones I struggle with. So I ended up leaving those behind. Guessing some of you are screaming at the phone or your device or whatever you're watching your TV right now saying, I would have grabbed those. But that's what's great about being who you are, we all get to sell what we want and do what we want and do what makes us happy. So I always say, if I don't like to list it, I'm not gonna pick it up because it's just gonna sit in my money pile. And that's something I'm trying to do more of is be more selective about what I pick up. And if I don't enjoy listing it, don't pick it up. Like I do not like to ship breakables. 
So I have a tendency to leave those behind. This guy I picked up and he's probably gonna be a little annoying to ship because I'm gonna have to find the right box. This sold on Whatnot. I had that in the Buy It Now. It's a little fireplace that lights up, super cute. Um, the items that I'm putting in my Buy It Now or my Marketplace on Whatnot, I'm trying to price very competitively to draw new people to my Whatnot. So if people are searching Whatnot for items, they could find my Whatnot and see that I have Buy It Nows and see that I do auctions and then they may follow me and come to one of my auctions. So having things in your Buy It Now is important. I have probably sold four or five things from my Buy It Now section, but I have sold many, many more from my Buy It Now section during my live show when I'm doing my auctions. So if you are live doing an auction on whatnot and you have things in your Buy It Now, you can include those in your show and people will get discounted shipping on the items that they buy from the Buy It Now. So definitely keep your Buy It Now stuffed if you are selling on whatnot and add those items to your show because people will buy items from the Buy It Now. Again, I'm trying to put things really fair prices in my Buy It Now section to encourage people to buy multiple items from me, if that makes sense. If I had that item listed on eBay, it would be priced higher. So it's kind of a marketing tool to grow my whatnot business. So if you guys are selling on whatnot, that might be a little tip that will be helpful for you. So yes, you can sell on whatnot and just do marketplace, just buy it now. You don't have to do auctions. And I feel like whatnot as a platform is going to continue to grow. And I also feel like marketplace on whatnot is something that is going to be up and coming. You know, I think that more people are going to start searching on whatnot for items like they do on eBay and Poshmark and Mercari and Depop and Grailed and all of those other marketplace style platforms where you're doing buy it nows or best offers. So definitely something to consider. It's still very new. So Maybe a good idea to get your foot in the door while it's still early. I do have a seller's link down below where you can join with a referral link. And it says that Bolo Buddies referred you and you may get accepted quicker. All right, you guys, we are about done digging for this video. Check out some of my other Goodwill Bins videos. This one, I didn't find a whole lot. It's not a super exciting video, but I wanted to put it out there in case you guys see something that I missed. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned in the video. And check out those links in the description of the video. Thanks for watching.